one particular day when God had called me into ministry. And when I tell you, I was out there running, doing what I wanted to do. But one particular day, and I was going through a bunch of mess. And it's funny how God can get your attention when you're in some mess. Things don't always have to be on the up for you. But I was in the middle of some mess. And I was going through some things in my first marriage. And I was just torn, being poor. So one day God said, get in your car and ride. And he had already told me years prior that he had called me into ministry. But I was like, Lord, I'm not doing that. I'm not, doing, I'm not answering that. So he said, get in your car and ride. So I began to ride. I began to ride up central to central to a Walmart. And I was on a back road. And as I began to drive, I turned the radio off. And I just began to go down this long, dark, black road. And I heard him say, as plain as day, y'all, slow down. Turn off your headlights. And I was like, what? He said, turn them off. Slow down. So I began to slow down, and I turned off the headlights. And he said, now drive. And I said, I can't. I can't see. He said, drive. I said, I can't. I can't go nowhere. Because the road up ahead is curving. I knew it, but I didn't know it. He said, drive. And I said, I can't. He said, well, without me in your life, this is what your life would look like. Going down a dark and lonely road. He said, turn on the lights so you can see clearly. And right then and there, when I turned the lights on, y'all, and I began to drive, I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for what you called me to be. And I didn't want to ask the call. I said, Lord, I do your will. I serve you wholeheartedly, but I will do your will. Wherever you want me to go. And that's why people have to be careful. In a lot of songs, that we sing, a lot of people get caught up in the beats. They don't listen to the words, they just listen to the music. Boom, the music, boom, boom. I love music. But we get so caught up in the music and don't listen to the words. Even there are some Christian songs that can deceive you if right. you're not careful. So that's why you have to listen to the words. Get off the beat. That's how the enemy try to confuse you. Right. Leave the beat alone and concentrate on what are the words saying. So I began to seek God. But I thought that, well, Lord, but you can't use me. I've done too much. I've done some terrible things. Why are you choosing me? But he said, Adrian, in spite of all, I knew what you was going to go through. I knew what you was going to do. But you got to remember, I'm the potter. I make no mistakes. You are the clay. I mold you. I shaped you. And I formed you. And I blew into you. He's done the same for you. Each and every one of us. No matter what we look like, what we've been through, God has purpose on all of your lives. No matter what man has spoken over your lives, there's purpose. There's destiny that's waiting on the outside of these four walls for you. It's not always about standing behind a pulpit thinking that that's your purpose. That's right. You can be deceived by thinking, well, if he didn't call him behind the pulpit, that's not a purpose on my life. But the devil is a lie. Yes, he is. You don't have to be behind a pulpit. You can be in a grocery store. You can be
be in a Walmart. You could be in a mall. You could be on your job. And to think about that, y'all, my second one is, I remember when God called me at the job I'm at now. He called me into this place. And to fast forward, I began to work and work and work and work. And one day, I was going home. And I looked at my supervisor's window. And I seen him reading the Bible. So when I looked in there, I went back and just kind of peeked around because I didn't want to see me. He's reading his Bible. So I ducked and I walked past his window and I came in and knocked on his door. When he opened the door, the Bible was gone. So I walked in and we began to have a conversation. And we talked and I didn't bother him. But another week goes by, I walked by and seen him reading his Bible again. This time, I heard someone just knock on his door. Well, I seen him open his drawer and put his Bible in and he closed it. So I said, okay, Lord. So about two days later, I said, I need to talk to you after work. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after work, we began to talk about some sports. So then I began to ease the conversation. And I said, let me ask you something. I said, have you Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And he said, what, Adrian? I said, have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? He's like, no, not really. I said, well, be, let's be honest. I said, it's just you and I standing here. I said, I see you reading your Bible. And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, I, hmm. you don't have to lie. I said, I see you reading your Bible. There's a couple of times I walked past your office. And you was reading your Bible. And I say, are you ashamed? He said, well, you know the kind of guys we work with that joke with you, mess with you. I said, but you can't be ashamed of the word. I say, so why are you ashamed when someone knocks on your door, you put it away? I said, if anything, keep it out. Keep it out. I said, regardless of what people say, don't be ashamed of the word. I said, because you shame of him, he would disown you. I said, but do you want to be saved? And he began to cry. He said, Asia, I've been through so much. You don't know my story. I said, I don't have to know. I don't want to know. I just want to know, do you want to accept the Lord and save me as your personal Savior? Do you want to be saved? And he said, man, no. Nah. I said, well, God loves you. I said, there's purpose on your life. I said, God got big things for you, man, in the future. And he, uh, well, about a week passed by, and he came back to me after work. He said, he told me. He said, man, I was riding in Greenville with one of my friends. And was going down this road with Asia. My friend was speeding down Augusta Road. He said, we began to fly down Augusta Road. And my friend said, uh, you need to slow down. And the other friend said, man, I'm on him. He said, we was rolling. He said, all of a sudden, my friend said, man, slow down, man. He said, people are always saying they trust and believe in God. He said, so if God got us, nothing won't happen to us. He said, but y'all believe in God, so he got us. He said, Adrian, all of a sudden, the car shifted sideways and threw him out. Killed him. And he began to tear. He said, Adrian, I want to be saved. He said, because that right there to me was an eye opener. He said, I want to be saved. And I began to pray with him. And he gave his life to God. Out there in the middle of the parking lot. And we just embraced for I don't know how long. But he just cried on my shoulder for I don't know how long. But y'all, <laughs> I tell you, it wasn't long after that assignment. 
God laid me off. I watched him become a supervisor. He has no degrees or nothing. Quick school. But I watched God after he gave his life to Christ raise him up to a supervisor. Over some of the guys that had been there for years, God put him on the top. And they laid me off. And he had to break the news to me that they was laying me off. But God had already set me up because I had an accident at work that broke my pinky finger. And that's why I looked sideways. I broke it at work. And when I broke it, I got a settlement before I got laid off. I got a settlement. So when I got my settlement, I pulled out. Why well, did I got my settlement? I put it in my account. And then two weeks or a month later, they started laying people off because the housing market began to fall in 08. So no one was billing anything. So they began to lay us a couple of us off. Well, I happened to be one of them. The second one they let go. So he came in and he told me, y'all, when I tell you, he cried like someone died. And I told him, it's okay. My daddy got me. I said, my, my assignment is complete here. Mm -hmm. I got to go. He said, but Adrian, I don't want you to go. I said, if you can't, you can't hold me, I said, what you going to do? I said, the other people made that decision, not you. I said, so what you going to do? I said, well, my daddy got me. I'm covered. And when they released me, at the same time, I was trying to get ordained. I was going to school, trying to work, trying to study. But God took me out of that workplace so I could study. And when I tell you, y'all, I had peace where I could read and read for hours. Just stay in that, stay in that word for hours. But I never went hungry. Never missed a light bill. My rent, nothing. Because he stored me with so much finances with my fear getting broken. That's why we always say you just never know how God's going to bless you. He didn't say how he's going to give it to you. But he'll give it to you. But he blessed me. And I never missed a beat. But now this time around, he called me back. And now, the same guy is the manager of the store that I'm currently at. He's over the store. And now he's about to be set as the region manager. Favor. Mm -hmm. Favor, y'all. I'm talking about over five stores. He's about to sit in the position of being the region manager of the upstate. But when he, I went back this time, the first thing he said when I went in, he said, Asia, I'm going to give you your job back. He said, I wasn't there. He said, I'm glad you can come back. He said, but I just got one question. I said, what's that? He said, I'm excited you back. He said, but there's one particular thing I'm more excited about. He said, who'd you come for? <laughs> and I just began to laugh. He said, I'm serious. Who did you come for? He said, I'm curious to know who's out there in the field with you that's about to be set up. Hmm. And I just began to laugh. I said, man, I just come to work. He said, no. Hmm. You on the side, man. He said, I know you on the side, man. He said, but this time, I'm ready. He said, because I know when you have to walk away this time, I'm going to be shedding tears of joy. Because God has done the work in someone else like he did the work in me. He said, but it takes you coming back this time for your assignments, for your season. So I'm, I'm at work now, and there's a couple of them that God is beginning to groom. But I'm listening. I'm not rushing. But I know there's some that's my assignment. That's right. 
and I know when it's up, I got to go. Mm -hmm. But there's the same thing on y'all lives. Assignments. But at the same time, you have to know where you are. When you think about a snake that's wheezing through the grass and through the woods, he's going over stumps, he's going over logs, he's going through a lot, right? Well, life treats us the same way. We go through a lot. There's a lot of stumbling blocks in our way. There's a lot of naysayers that's in our way. We're going up, we're going down, up a tree, down a tree. I mean, under the ground, through dark, out back through light. But then there comes a season where you have to begin to shed your skin. Because remember, as it said, that a snake grows, the skin doesn't. So there's callings on each and every one of your lives that you have to shed the place that you're in because you got to grow. You have to grow. There's no room for you to stay where you are. Think about it. How many of you ever had some clothes that you like? Your favorite pair of shorts, your favorite pair of pants, your shirt, you just love that outfit. Them shoes, just sport them shoes, them Nike, them heels, crease them, you just... But then you begin, your feet begin to grow. You begin to get bigger. You begin to outgrow them clothes. You try to pull them pants up. You try to get on that shirt and it's just too tight. It ain't fitting no more. So then you say, oh, I'm going to go out and buy some more. But when you go out, it's discontinued. Hmm. Ain't no more. And you just running from store to store trying to find that outfit, but it ain't, it ain't there no more. So you're like, oh, but it's my favorite. But it ain't there no more. And it's the same way when it's hot outside, we in shorts, we in pants, which is real hot. But it's something that we know the season when we can wear shorts or the season when it's time to put on a coat. But we don't recognize the season in our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. When God is trying to move you from one place to the other. But you got to begin to hear from God and where he's trying to take you. When they say parasites, People has tried their hardest to leech on to you, to drain you of your purpose, of your destiny. It says a parasite is an organism that lives on or in a host or organism and gets its food from or at the expense of its host until there is host is no longer a viable source. So there are people that have tried to leech onto you and drain you of your purpose and drain you of your destiny. So once they begin to drain, you just begin to become stagnant. And then you just feel like, well, Lord, you can't use me. But you was equipped with purpose. You was equipped with destiny. But then we get in a place and we fall into that slump. Tell the Lord, I'm just here to work, to eat, to laugh, to sleep, to travel, to vacation, and that's it. No purpose. No purpose. I'm just here on earth. Going to and fro. Who wants to live like that? But there are people that's living like that every day. Mm -hmm. In the rat race. Work, home, eat, sleep. Work, home, eat, sleep. And that's their life pattern. But that ain't how God called, and that ain't how God designed us to be. There are people, lives, 
There are people dying every day. They always say the richest people are in the graves. There's so much purpose. There's some destiny in the graves. But while the blood is yet still running warm in our veins, we need to seek God for a purpose. What is your assignment? Where is God trying to position you to be? Next month. This month. Is this your shedding season? Is this your time to come out of the skin that you're in, the shell that you're in, into your new? Are you questioning God? Well, Lord, you didn't call me there. So you don't want to step into that new place? But don't be like Gideon. Remember, Gideon questioned God three times. I just would not want to find myself in that place to keep questioning God over and over. Well, God, is this you? You sure this you? You sure this you? Give us some more confirmation, God. Instead of stepping into that place and trusting Him. That's right. But I truly believe there is someone here this day, this hour, that God is positioning you into your purpose, into your destiny. This is your shedding season. This is it. This is your time to begin to share in what God has called you to be. We must remember that the process of coming to our destiny in God does not happen without a struggle. Remember, all callings depend on God's grace not on our ability. He calls you to do what he knows you can do or enable you to do. Provided you depend on his grace, not your own ability. Mm. Don't do it without me. And I don't think none of us, none of us, want partial of what God has for us. We want the fullness. Anybody want the fullness? Yes. Anybody looking for the fullness? The fullness. The fullness. I don't want partial. I want the fullness. I don't want a partial blessing. Anybody want a partial blessing? Anybody want a partial breakthrough? Anybody want a partial inheritance? Anybody want a partial healing? I want the fullness. Someone say, Lord, I want the fullness. I want the fullness. I want all that you have for me. I want it all. I want to experience it all. So just remember, in this season that you currently in, and no one but God himself knows the position of each and every one of us. Yes, he does. He put people in our lives to speak into us. Because sometimes we have to be shaken. We have to be wakened. But this is not a season to sleep. there are people that are waiting for you that are dependent on you and it's not always about somebody trying to get in your hip pocket and take your money but there are lives that are out there with your name your name and they're waiting for you so whatever it is that people have spoken against you, whatever it is you had to go through, all the sins, whatever it is, 
as the song I always say, Jesus dropped the charges. Amen. But fulfill your promise. Fulfill your destiny. Get in position. Begin to shed where you are. Because God is forever moving. He's forever moving forward. He's not going backwards. So we can't afford to turn around and look what's behind us. We got to move forward. We have to go forward. We have to press towards the mark. But just like the snake, just like every insect, frog, spiders, whatever it is, if they got a season of shedding, how do you think God feels about this? And we was created his image. That's awesome. We was created in his image. So how do you think he feels about this? He could have made us a leaf. He could have made us a tree. Anything. But he said, I'm going to create you in my image. He loved you and he loved me just that much. So he did not just put us on this earth just to eat, to sleep, to work, to travel. But he put us here for purpose. He put you here for destiny. But every season, remember, don't get comfortable where you are. Even if you move in position to your season, just remember there, come, there is going to become another season where you're going to have to change again and come out of where you are and move into your next. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you right now, Father. We thank you for equipping each and every one of us with purpose, with destiny, and Father, forgive us right now, Lord God, if there's anyone that has not answered the call on their lives. We just pray right now, Lord God, that you'll forgive us and that you continue to allow us to walk it out. And Father God, we just pray right now that if there's someone in this sanctuary this afternoon that you have already spoken to, Lord God, about their shedding season, Lord God, we just pray right now, Lord God, that they'll go with full pursuit in what you have called them to be in this hour. There'll be no distractions, there'll be no delays in what you have called them to be, Lord God. But we thank you right now, Father, for allowing us, Lord God, to have purpose, to have destiny over our lives. No matter what we look like, no matter what we've been through, Lord God, through every trial, tribulation, up and down, Lord God, we still thank you for not giving up on us. And we thank you right now, Lord God, for not snatching the breath of life from us, but for giving us another chance to get it right. So, Father God, we just pray right now that you would touch everyone that's under the sound of my voice, that they would answer the call on their lives right now, Father. And I thank you right now, Lord God, for the grace and mercy of all of our lives. And Father God, we just pray that this day forth, Lord God, that we'll go outside of these four walls, Lord God, seeking the direction that you have for us, Lord God. And we just thank you right now, Father, for the journey that we're about to enter into. We thank you for the new skin that we're about to shed into right now, Lord God. And we thank you for the season that we were in, but now you're pulling us out. And Father God, we give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.